Carbon credits and offsets are becoming more and more important as we strive to achieve net zero emissions. So what are they and why are they so important? In this video, we'll introduce you to carbon credits and outline the current state of the market. But before we get into it, if you would like to see more videos like this one, hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date. A quick history of carbon credits, offsets and markets. The Kyoto Protocol and the Paris Agreement were the international accords that laid out CO2 emissions goals. With the Paris Agreement being endorsed by all but six countries, they have given rise to national emissions targets and the regulations to back them. The pressure on businesses to reduce their carbon footprint is increasing with these new regulations in place. A majority of today's interim solutions involve the carbon markets. What the carbon markets do is transform CO2 emissions into a commodity by assigning them a value. These can be divided into two groups, carbon credits or carbon offsets, and they can both be bought and sold on a carbon market. It's a simple concept with a market-based answer to a growing problem. So what are carbon credits and carbon offsets? Carbon credits, also known as carbon allowances, work like permission slips for emissions. When a company buys a carbon credit, usually from the government, they gain permission to generate one ton of CO2 emissions. With carbon credits, carbon revenue flows vertically from companies to regulators, though companies who end up with the excess credits sell them to other companies. The main goal for creation of carbon credits is the reduction of emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases from industrial activities to reduce the effects of global warming. Carbon offsets flow horizontally, trading carbon revenue between companies. When one company removes or sequesters a unit of carbon from the atmosphere as part of their normal business activity, they can generate a carbon offset. Other companies can then purchase that carbon offset to reduce their own carbon footprint. Companies that achieve the carbon offsets, reducing the emissions of greenhouse gases, are usually rewarded with the additional carbon credits. The sale of credit surpluses may be used to subsidize future projects for the reduction of emissions. How are carbon credits and offsets created? Credits and offsets form two slightly different markets. Although the basic unit traded is the same, the equivalent of one ton of carbon emissions, also known as CO2e. Carbon credits are issued by national or international governmental organizations. The number of credits issued each year is typically based on emissions targets. Credits are frequently issued under what's known as the cap and trade program. Regulators set a limit on carbon emissions the cap, that cap slowly decreases over time, making it harder and harder for businesses to stay within that cap. Around the world, cap and trade programs exist in some form in Canada, the EU, the UK, China, New Zealand, Japan, and South Korea, with many countries and states considering implementation. As a result, companies are incentivized to reduce the emissions their business operations produce to stay under their caps. If you're looking for a deeper dive into carbon credits, we've got a full blog up on postharvest.com. We've also got a bunch of other free courses available while you're there. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for regular content. Together, we can help the world go a little bit greener.